All right. Hi, hello. We're in here. I am trying out a new microphone today, so let's cross our fingers that it works. I'm also going to try out some different settings on Riverside. I've been getting like uh, like a glitching, popping sound when I record that wasn't there before, so I feel like Riverside has changed some things. And uh, what I think is happening is it's over-processing and it's trying to cut out noises that aren't there or something. So I'm just going to, when I finish this, I'm just going to export it raw and um, let uh, Buzz cast, Buzz, who, who hosts my website, Buzz Sprout, do the fixing up. I don't know. I'm going to see how that sounds because when I test it, I don't get that sound. But then after I export it, I get that sound. So it's something in the export process. I don't know. Live TV. Hi. Welcome back to the bookcast. This is my platform for sharing short fiction and updates on what I'm reading and writing. This is episode 55. We are over the 50 episode hump on our way to 100. Alrighty. I am D.L. White. I am author of contemporary Southern and romantic fiction novels featuring black men and women. I'm also a big fan of books. So we usually begin with a book report. Then we talk about what I'm writing. I am currently prepping to write Still I Rise, a Potter Lake small town romance. Uh, I'm supposed to start that next week. We'll see. I need to really uh, get down with the planning. Um, I already started this book, but it's been a minute since I had it open. So I really need to like go back and start over and like really actually do good planning because I just jumped into this with both feet, then hit a wall and quit as you do. And uh, so I need to like really go back and like fortify myself, know these characters, know their backstories, figure out their motivations. What's their goal? What's the conflict? What, how, why can't they be together? What's keeping them apart? Um, And like, how do we make our way forward to the end? And uh, as well, I need to maybe update a little bit on the town of Potter Lake. What's new? What's, you know, what's happening? Um, I think this book is going to be a bit, a little bit of a transition from old Potter Lake to new Potter Lake. The the Cade Cavanaugh administration is doing real good things. And so I am, uh, I'm excited to dig into it. I am not ready, though. So uh, if I am not ready, I will jump into 20k in five days and just stare at my computer for several hours and that will just be frustrating. So going to be working on that this weekend. 20k in five days starts on Thursday, right after I finish a big old uh, three day on site thing at work. So um, I'm going to celebrate, you know, the best way I know how. Um, <laughs> um, so yes, hi, welcome back. If you're new here, or you're a seasoned listener, a bibliophile, or just looking for a good read. I hope you'll enjoy today's show. I am happy to have your ears for this time. I'm excited to share my love of reading and writing books with you. I love your support of this podcast. Uh, I do currently have one supporter. She is hanging in. She's hanging tough. Uh, if you'd like to join her, head to my support site at buymeacoffee.com slash books by D.L. White. There you can offer a one-time or recurring monthly gift. I do so appreciate it. And uh, at some point, we'll get to where I offer, you know, rewards and behind the scenes type stuff. But uh, right now, I don't have the bandwidth or capacity for that. Like, I don't, I currently do not, like, literally don't know what I could offer um, to, like, kind of plus that up. So if you have ideas, shoot them at me. Um I'll see what I can do. But for now, if you'd like to support, it's uh, $5 a month is a great add a girl for me. And it helps to keep this podcast running and uh, keeps me in pens and pretty notebooks I won't use. The other way you can support is to buy my books. As always, booksbydlwhite.com slash books has all the good stuff, including my new release, Elysium, a Black Diamond Vacation Romance. It's available in ebook and print at booksbydlwhite.com slash Elysium. I don't currently have print copies of that book in my personal inventory. The earliest copies appear to be rolling out from Amazon and Barnes & Noble, and you might be able to grab a copy from bookshop.org. 
as well. Check out Resist Booksellers and Booksellers. Check out Resist Booksellers in a bit. Um, they might have print copies coming soon. As soon as I let Demetrius know that it's available on Ingram Spark, mm-hmm. so he can order them and have them in store. They're very pretty books. Very pretty books. We'll talk a little bit about how sales on Elysium are going. So yeah, looking forward to that. Speaking of books, happy fourth birthday, book birthday to my gal, the guy next door. That's book three in the Potter Lake Small Town Romance series. A sheer delight of a book from cover to cover. A comfort read for a lot of folks. My IG friend Nikki Reads just told me she's read that book about three times now. And I know Karen the Reader and Summer Reads Romance have both read it several times. In real talk, I've read it a lot post-publication. It's a really good book, if I have to say so myself. And and I do. Uh, you can snatch up copies of The Guy Next Door and all of my titles in ebook, print, or audio direct, direct from my hands at payhip.com slash books by D.L. White. That puts the money directly into my pocket with no middleman, virtually no middleman taking up a percentage of the retail price. Payhip does still take a percentage Um but it's like 5% of my price. So I make literally like 95% of what is is paid. And then I think PayPal takes out a little bit, but still the, if you care, if you care, if you don't, cool, cool. If you care, the royalties are so much better when you buy them direct. The book is delivered via book funnel. There are instructions to add it to your Kindle, your Nook, your, I think your Kobo reader, I think. I, I have never tried it. I do not have a Kobo reader. I don't read uh, Kobo. I don't read Kobo books on any kind of reader. I have the app on my phone. Uh, By the way, I do subscribe to Kobo Plus. Love it. Um, I have been able to find some audiobooks that I can't find anywhere else uh, uh, that are listed in Kobo Plus. Anyway, anyway, it puts the money directly into my pocket. No middleman, virtually no middleman, taking a large percentage of the retail price. Uh, I don't know if you all know, but Amazon takes 30 to 70 percent of the retail price. Drafted Digital takes an additional 10 percent off of that. I don't know how much Barnes and Noble takes because I'm not direct with them. I'm direct with Google Play and Amazon and my store and everywhere else I go through Drafted Digital. And so, you know, it's 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 cut after cut before I get paid for the book. Uh, if you buy them direct, it's one cut. Maybe two, because I think PayPal takes a cut as well. But it's pennies um, as opposed to dollars. Um, So there's that. If you prefer to buy them retail, ain't no shame in your game. My books are not for sale anywhere. I don't want them to be. So if you want to buy them retail, gone, which is a bad self. They're available in ebook, uh, wherever they're sold, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Nook, Apple Books, Kobo Books, Google Play. They are also available via subscription sites like Script and Kobo Plus. And they're available to request at your local library. I recently, I just sent an email actually to draft to digital I distribute my books to Scribd through draft to digital Half of my books are not listed at Scribd, and I don't know what's going on with that. So it could be a thing where uh, people aren't reading them or aren't listening to them, and so they've been delisted. But I don't put my books in Kindle Unlimited because of the exclusivity clause. So having my books available being via Scribd means that people can subscribe to a site and read my books and not have to buy them because that has that's you know, like that has to work for certain people. So if my books are going to be randomly not available, then I'm not going to distribute to Scribd. I'm just going to put them at Kobo Plus where all of them are listed ebook and audio and you can subscribe to Kobo Plus and listen and read to your heart's content if Scrib wants to be difficult. That's how we can play that game because they don't really pay more than dust anyway. So um, I'll keep you posted on that. So um, I did also see that I have some audiobooks that have been added to Hoopla, uh, which is it's really, really hard to get your books on Hoopla. They, they're the waiting. They're, some books have been waiting years to be put on Hoopla. I'm just saying. So finally got my books on there. So yay! Search there by book title if you're looking. I'm so excited that my books are on Hoopla. Um, that's awesome. 
Today, we will start with the book report as always. And then I'm talking prep for 20K in five days, um, where I'll be rebooting the work I've done on Still I Rise, which is the next book in the Powder Lake series. I do not understand why the next book keeps writing myself, writing itself in my brain. I keep saying I'm not a series writer, and yet the series just keep coming. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about Elysium and how we're doing on sales and reviews. Today is Saturday, September 9th, 2023. It is 9, 12 a.m. It's going to be a sunny day in Atlanta. It feels cool. The weather feels cooler. It's it's like not 99 degrees. I'm, I'm just going to check the weather super quick. It's 71 degrees in Atlanta, and it's going to be mostly sunny. High of 86. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, I have a mic. I have a brand new mic. And I hope it sounds good. I won't know until I'm done recording this. I am ready to dig in, but first, let's have some coffee. Beautiful. We'll see how that works. Um, Welcome back. We begin, as always, with the book report because I'm a bookhead. I would rather be reading than doing anything else in life ever. When I'm watching TV, I am thinking about what's going to happen next in the book I'm reading. Uh, If I am doing anything, I am always thinking about how I can put my earbuds in and turn my audiobook on. I'm just really into books. So let's talk about the books I read this week. I have read 123 books of my challenge to read 175 books this year. I did raise my challenge goal. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. And uh, that puts me at only three books ahead on my Goodreads challenge instead of 17. That's more like it. Uh, I do feel like I'm going to have to raise it again, but we'll see where I sit when I hit, you know, close to 175. Um, This week I read four books. Dead Against Her, which uh, by Melinda Lee, which is in the Brie Taggart series. It's number five. This series is okay. It's just something to pass the time. Um, I'm kind of, mm, kind of, I'm kind of getting into it, but you know, uh, Melinda Lee is a lot like Mary Burton. Like it, if you have a long series of like detective, private investigator novels, police procedurals, I just put them on and like do stuff, do laundry, wash the dishes, wash my hair. It's something to listen to while I do stuff. I also read Lie to Her, which is Brie Taggart number six by Melinda Lee. I read Forever Again, which is book number five in the Cordoba Agency romantic suspense series by my good friend Delaney Diamond. Um, It was excellent. I love love the Cordoba Agency series. Um, You should definitely start with book one. I can't remember what the name of it is. I feel like it's like something. It starts with two words, like until now. Is that the book? Is that book one? I don't remember, but it's really good. Start with book one. Make your way all the way through because um, Delaney Diamond is quality, quality reading. Love her. I also finished His Favorite Graves um, by Paul Cleave. Uh, I said last week, Paul is a New Zealand thriller author who does release books here in the U.S. This book was so, so good. So good. Um, Like, I don't, I don't have words. (laughs) I don't have words. I wish I could be like eloquent with it, but it was like at 40%, I was like, what is happening, Paul? I sent him a DM and I was like, I don't understand. What is, where is this book going? He's like, I hope you enjoy it. Um, So after 40%, I did in no way predict what was going to happen in the next 60% of that book. Uh, All of it. Twists, the twists have twists as usual with Paul. Um, Excellent, excellent book. If you're a Paul Cleave fan, you're going to love, love this one. If you're not a Paul Cleave fan yet, go get The Cleaner. Start with the Theodore Tate series. Make your way all the way through that and then do like five minutes alone. And then maybe um, there's another book. I can't think of the name of it. Uh, I wish I could look these these things up before I start referring to them in a podcast. But essentially, 
I've read everything Paul Cleave has written. And if you if you like thrillers and you trust my opinion and you also really like Karen Slaughter, you'll probably love Paul Cleave. Put it into your face. Dig into it. I am having kind of a light reading week weekend. I am uh, I just finished. Did I just finish? I don't even remember. 12 Tribes of Hattie by Ayana Mathis. I'm prepping to read her next book, which comes out, I think, September 26th. I do not remember the title and I don't want to look it up, but a next uh, and Ayana Mathis is coming up. For some reason, I felt like I needed to reread the 12 Tribes of Hattie before I read this next one coming up. I think it's a continuation. If it's not, I'm going to be mad because I listened to eight hours of this in audio and I, it's still a three star read for me. I do not like short stories. So um, that was a sacrifice for me. And uh, I would like to not read that book again, if I'm being uh, honest. I'm, I want to be done with it. So we'll see what the next book is. For some reason, I felt like I needed to reread 12, 12 Tribes of Hattie, say that five times fast. Um, be, because I don't read blurbs, I just be getting books and then opening them up and reading them. I have no idea what the next book is about. So we'll see. Um, so that's it. Uh, this coming week, I don't think I have any, I don't think I have any arcs coming up, but I'm just going to look super quick because I can. I'm going, I'm going to NetGalley to look these up. I usually have them on my calendar and I know when I did my wrap up last week that I didn't have anything. Um, I didn't have anything. I have something coming up September 19th and then September 26th. I have two books coming up. So September 19th, The Black Angel by Maria Smelios. I don't know why I requested this book, but we're going to see what it's about. Down to the Wire by Patricia Sargent is another romantic suspense. And then The Unsettled by Ayana Mathis uh, also comes out on September 26th. So I am looking at this Ayana Mathis book and I don't I don't think it has anything to do with the 12 tribes of Hattie. So I don't know why I reread that book, but you know. At least it got read. Um, I am I'm looking further on my list. I do see I have a Robert Dugoni coming up. I absolutely ate through the Tracy Crosswhite series this year. One Last Kill is the next book. I think it's book 10 in the Tracy Crosswhite series. I might wait for audio on that one or see if I can get an audio arc because I have listened to all of them so far. So I don't know how reading it is going to go. Also, The Other Princess by Denny S. Bryce is coming up. This cover is absolutely gorgeous. I believe it's historical fiction, I believe. Sarah Forth Bonetta kidnapped African princess, blah, blah, and so, such and so. Um... A novel of Queen Victoria's goddaughter. So kind of looking forward to that. That is a uh, historical fiction. So that's what's going on through October 3rd on my arc list. Uh, kind of looking forward to that. I'm going to need some fiction to uh, decompress from all the writing I have to do uh, next weekend. So there we go. Um, Elysium. So. I have not yet sold 100 copies of this book. I have sold 76 copies and one of those, well, two of those copies are me. I'm always the first person to buy my book on Amazon. I just want to make sure it works, that it looks good before I announce it. And I bought a print copy of the book from Amazon because it was taking too long to get to me from draft to digital uh, the kicker is the draft digital copy will still probably get to me faster than the Amazon copy because they are saying it's going to be like September 16th. They move real, real slow when you don't go direct. Um, so, uh, yeah, the rollout for this book, you know, in, in, in hindsight, I didn't really do the book justice in the lead up and the rollout. I could have taken more time and dragged it out. I could have teased it more during the writing. I think, you know, in my past podcasts, I've talked a lot about how I was nervous about that because 
the text changes so much between the draft and the final copy. I don't want to put something out there and say, yeah, this is it. This is coming. And then like, you know, all the samples that I have posted of this book have all changed. They don't look like that in the book. So every time I go over this book, I, I layer more, I change, I move things around. So putting out samplers and teasers makes me nervous because that is not what you're going to see when you open the book. And also my my first mind when I'm writing a book is not always my doesn't always match my last mind. I'm always going to have a better way of saying things, a different way of saying things. When I make my last couple of passes is when I go through and polish and clean up the language and, you know, move things around and um, shore things up, cut out words, make things tighter, make sentences more languid, make things more tempting. Like, does this need to go here? Does this need to be here? I'm super, super, super critical right before I go to publish a book. So I could have teased more. I could have dragged out the release more, like maybe, you know, at least a week. But I was already four weeks past when I wanted to release the book because I sent it through a professional edit, uh, which took uh, four weeks, five weeks. Uh, The book is beautiful. I have not found a single typo which is awesome. So I'm happy with that. I'm super tempted to send the rest of my books through a professional edit. I don't want to do that to my editor, but I'm super tempted to do it. Um, I I don't know. I, I, I feel... <sighs> I'm I'm a double-minded on it. I'm very proud of this book. I love it to pieces. I'm very disappointed in the reception. I did get some feedback from a good writer friend that the cover doesn't match the spice level. When people look at this cover, they think it's going to be a warm, maybe a rom-com, um, a warm like women's fiction type book. It doesn't read spicy. And I get that. I uh, absolutely get that. My my issue, I wanted to change the cover style of this book. I just could not find images that represented my characters that I could afford to buy. Uh, the images that I can afford, um, if you have ever looked through deposit photos, it's paltry. The selection just isn't there. Um, it's like it's it's hard to make sexy covers for a book and especially if you have a series like the the for the images should match um you know uh, you know I get it I, I fully get the criticism of the cover I like the covers I did the best I could with what I had um should they be darker should they be sexier can you do you know, can you do a, a sexy cover that doesn't have people on it? Sure. But also they are, they're vacation romances. They're not, it, it's not, they're not erotica. They're not, um, you know, they're, 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 they're vacation romances set on a romantic island. It's a great summer read. It's beachy. It's vacation-y. Um, I don't want to go completely the other way and misrepresent the book. So best I can do is write the heck out of the blurb and I maybe, you know, in the title and the subtitle, make sure people know this is a vacation romance. And like, you know, me as a a writer, I don't often write a book without spice in it. Uh, uh, They ain't going to be swinging from the chandeliers, but it's going to be something going on in the book. Um, So maybe before the third book comes out, I can change the style of the covers. For right now, I like them. I don't think they are the market for a sexy romance. And I get that. Uh, Perhaps the cover just doesn't entice people. Um, The reviews are starting to come in. Uh, It's basically from... 
uh, readers that know me and uh, have read the book and really enjoyed it. I'm I'm happy with the reviews so far. I um, am thinking about how to push this book further. Um, I did run ads for a week. I just I cannot afford a hundred dollars a day of running ads, you know, to you know for to have a, a a big reach. I did run some ads. I I think that helped. I might uh, set up a little virtual book tour and see if that will get the word out. Um, I I stopped sending the book out to bloggers or pretty early on. I want to say with Beach Thing because I felt like. Um, I felt like the bloggers went into it with, ugh, I guess I'll read this, and then gave a very bland milk toast review of the book. Um, the exception to that is, I think, Audra Russell read Beach Thing and A Thin Line and then had me on between the reads. And we had such a good conversation about Beach Thing like that's the that book's maybe 50,000 words but we there's like so much packed into it there's Wade and his relationship with his dad and Amina and her relationship with her parents and what she is doing and Wade and Amina's relationship and like you know how they come together and the choices that they have to make and um we had like such a good robust conversation about this little book. So I know it is possible to take this book seriously and give it the review that it deserves. I feel like asking certain bloggers, bookstagrammers, book talkers to read it after they have read the Natasha Bishops and the Brianne Denae's and the, you know, all the other, I feel like asking them to read this after they have read all of those other authors I feel like they get it and they yawn. I don't I don't think that they're interested in it. Which okay. <laughs> That's why I haven't asked them. So, um I I I am I'm still working through how to really how to promote this book and how to get it out there. I am going to do a sample Sunday tomorrow and just really start sharing more of the book promo is still ongoing we're still only in week two of release I feel like um, I typically I typically sell way more books in week one and two like dinner at Sam's I think sold 250 books in the first week I sold like 50 of Elysium Um, but again like I think I said last week, Beach Thing was a sleeper. Uh, Beach Thing was a real sleeper. And again, I think the cover doesn't tell people that it's some spice up in here and you're going to really enjoy it. Um, so I would love to change the cover style of this book. I just have not found an image that says vacation romance, not erotica. Uh, when I do, I, I have no qualms in changing the cover. So you know, we'll see what comes in the future. But for right now, this is this is what it is. So um, I haven't checked my reviews in a while because they stress me out. Uh, but I do know several people have reached out to me to tell me they really enjoyed the book. And they gave it a favorable review. Thank you so much to all of the good people that have read and reviewed and shared the book. Please keep sharing it. If you have read it and have not yet reviewed, please do so asapsually. Um, I do really need those reviews. Reviews are for readers. Um, just because I don't read them doesn't mean nobody's reading them. And um, readers really do use reviews to determine if they're going to read a book. So despite what the cover be looking like, um, I do think it's a good cover. At least it's not booty. It's not It's not an ugly cover. Um it does say beachy romance, I think. So, you know, you know. Anyhow, so that's what's going on with Elysium. We march on. We continue to promo even as we're moving into the next Potter Lake novel. Uh, Still I Rise, I think is going to be a fun book. And just, I'm just, I'm at a, I hit a wall um, once my characters meet in person 
which is typically where I hit the wall because I'm like, okay, they met what now? And I, the meet happens in like chapter three of the book, which is very typical for me. Uh, it's not going to be a slow burn, but it's not going to be like Elysium where there is basically punch in on page one. So, um, my, my routine is usually if things are going to happen, it's before 50% and then we carry out the rest of, you know, we carry out the rest of the book through acts two and three with whatever conflict is going to happen. I... I don't see a third act breakup in this book, but in my mind, like going through what happens in this book, it's also not going to be a fairy tale. Renda left Potter Lake many, many years ago. Uh, she was supposed to get married and left her groom at the altar. Uh, she's a runaway bride uh huh, and uh, ends up returning to Potter Lake sometime later. Uh, so it's a prodigal daughter returns home kind of thing. She is not planning to stay. Uh, she just needs to get her bearings and she needs a job because she cannot work at Helen's kitchen because Helen the Blanc and Brenda Bell butt heads like they love each other. But no, um, Kingston, uh, I don't have a last name for him. I don't think if I do, I don't remember what it is. Uh, Kingston and his father have recently moved to Potter Lake. Um, his father was a former sports hero and has moved to Potter Lake to work with the same doctor that treated Cade, or I guess in the same practice that treated Cade's sports injury. So Kingston and his father have moved um, east and they're in this, you know, little town. They've decided to kind of settle in and Kingston um, took over or opened this little cafe called Still I Rise, which is Potter Lake's answer to Cracker Barrel. So half of it is like, you know, kitschy knickknacks and newspapers and T-shirts and whatnot. And the other half is um, a cafe. So it's a, you know, breakfast and lunch. They open from like 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. type of place. Like J. Christopher's, um, if J. Christopher's was a um, Cracker Barrel. <laughs> um, so Kingston runs Still I Rise and Helen comes into the cafe to ask if Kingston can give her daughter a job. And uh, Kingston has not met Brenda. Kingston ain't even know Miss Helen had a daughter. And so uh, this book is Brenda coming back to town and everybody's like, hey, where have you been? Why did you leave? Lots of stuff has to be uncovered. So I, it's going to be a fun one. I do need to like map things out a bit. There's some reveals that have to come. There's some stories that have to be told. There's fences that need to mend and then you know is Renda gonna stay is she gonna leave like what you know what happens what is the story and I'll be honest I don't know yet because I am a pantser the story tells itself to me and then I tell it to you so as soon as I know what the story is I'll let y'all know um so that's what I'm going to be working on today and tomorrow, some of Monday, I guess, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, I have all day meetings at work. So I'm, I just really need to get myself together and get myself in order before 20 K in five days begins on Thursday, the 13th. And then we run five days through the weekend. Um, it's going to be a good time. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to digging back into it. Um, another thing I was thinking about, uh, while I'm not a series writer, I keep saying is another book in the Rubies series. I do still have drinks at Minx that I need to write, which is the true follow up to Brunch at Rubies, which is the continuation of the story of those three ladies that you met in Rubies, but also Yvette, who was in Dinner at Sam's, like her story is just screaming at me. She's a private investigator that Gibson hires to find out what's going on with Vanessa's ex. 
And I wrote her a real nice, juicy backstory. And I really want to write her. I want to write her story. She's a private investigator that used to be in the army. And she ends up taking a case for this guy that used to, uh, that she used to serve in the army with. Um, He was an army attorney. They have both separated from the army. She lost her fiance in Afghanistan. And so she's all broken up. And he has always had feelings for her, but kind of stood back because she was involved. And now that she's not involved, he wants to make his move. Doesn't know how because she's obviously still very upset at the loss of her fiance, etc. and so on. She's a private investigator and they get on a case together. Um, the story has kind of been scratching at me. And so I'm I'm thinking like maybe next year... I might try to write it. Drinks at Minx does not talk to me at all. Like I did start that. I have like six chapters of something, but it just, it doesn't talk to me at all. So I don't know that I'm going to have a follow up. Like maybe I'll do a short next year to like catch everybody up on the ladies from Ruby's. Um, But I feel like a missing persons is the book that I want to write with Yvette and Malik <clears throat> not to change his name because I already have a Malik as a hero. Uh, I, I I took that name because I didn't think I was going to write that book. And uh, I gave it to Malik, who is in Hey Lover. Uh, so now I have to think of a different name. And it can't be an M. I am totally in love with M names. It can't be an M. So I got to think of <clears throat> I got to think of a, a different name for the hero in Missing Persons. But um, that's that is, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of eaten at me. And also there's a three book series that I want to write involving sisters. And like, do I want that to be women's fiction? Do I want that to be romance? Like to me, I like, I'm bored if there's no romance in it. And so I would love to get away from romance, but I'm, so I'm, I'm bored if there's no, if there's no romance angle to it. So like maybe I was thinking maybe missing, missing persons could be a romantic suspense. But the idea that I have for them, the case I have for them, isn't suspenseful, you know? So, and then maybe that could lead to a sub-series, but I I don't know. I'm just really getting ahead of myself. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, I am trying to think of anything else that I need to share. All is good. All is well. I can't believe it's already September and like it's already mid-September. Crazy. It's absolutely craziness. So it's going to be a really good week over here in Books by D.L. Whiteland. We continue to pump Elysium. Um, We are prepping to write book 13. We are moving and shaking. And we are having a good time doing it. So that brings us to the close of today's episode. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the bookcast. I was so happy to have you here. I'll be back next week with a reading update and a writing update because, yeah, I'm going to be writing. Please, please enjoy this weekend. Have a superlative week and we will chat again next weekend. Bye bye. (laughs) 